Well, busing has been the biggest expense for the city of El Paso as they've been taking migrants out of the city. And as of yesterday, September 28th, the city has spent more than $3 million in busing migrants out of El Paso. And this is despite, you know, city leaders and Congresswoman Veronica Escobar saying that the city would be fully reimbursed for their expenses. But as of today, the city has admitted that there is a percentage of, you know, 30% limit and we're already more than halfway to that limit. So this is not new guidance related to long distance transportation. The city of El Paso today explaining how taxpayers could end up paying for the migrant crisis in El Paso, even though they told us for weeks that the federal government would reimburse those costs. The long distance transportation or the charter buses must be prioritized for up to 30 percent of the migrant population served. Nicole Cody is the managing director of budgeting for the city. She says the federal government will reimburse the city for transporting up to 30 percent of migrants who are sent to other cities. With 38,000 migrants released in El Paso so far and 6,305 being provided with long distance travel, El Paso has reached 16.5 percent of that 30 percent limit. We're going to be monitoring. This is a new situation where previously we did not have to provide um, charter buses because we were dealing with mainly sponsored migrants. The city of El Paso is spending roughly $200,000 a day on the charter buses out of town. And just this week finalized a total of $6 million to pay for those buses, including $2.8 million, which has already been spent. If the city reaches that 30% limit, taxpayers will have ended up paying more than $4 million, money that would have come from the city's general fund. Right now, we are, we're eligible. But moving forward, if we still continue to see a large population that's going to require transportation, we might not be. And it doesn't just happen in dark places. Sex trafficking is often in plain sight at transit hubs like airports, bus stations, and truck stops nationwide, flying under the radar and going unnoticed to the untrained eye until it's not. It looked like they ranged anywhere from 15, 16, maybe 18 years old, but all of them very, very young. This one, she didn't even look 13, 14 years old. Sex trafficking is a form of modern day slavery. It's when traffickers are using force, fraud, or coercion to compel an individual to engage in commercial sex. It also involves anyone who's under the age of 18 is considered a victim of sex trafficking. And it's happening right here in San Antonio and across Texas. Trafficking is happening all across our country, but truckers are also everywhere. They are in places that law enforcement are not and are uniquely positioned to see potential victims and to be a point of safety and recovery for victims of human trafficking. Truckers Against Trafficking is a national organization educating drivers who can often serve as eyes and ears, spanning the nation on a daily basis, hundreds of miles at a time. My trafficker chose if I got to eat, what I had to do, who I had to do it with, how many I had to do it with. I was in shock at first and then angry and then sad and then just felt broken. Until the day she escaped and ran to a nearby truck stop. After hiding out in the bathroom for three days, she was approached by the manager who recognized the signs. I just broke down crying and just let it all out. He told me he belonged to a group called Truckers Against Trafficking. He gave me a blanket, he gave me a change of clothes. He told me I could help myself to the food and the drinks. They look for things like a hard time with communication. They're very restricted communication. Double Diamond Transport in San Antonio joined Truckers Against Trafficking last year and has trained their drivers, adding these bumper stickers to all of their 285 trailers with the hotline number for help. We'll be putting those on and, you know, that could help just everyday drivers if they see something too. 41 percent of victims rescued through Truckers Against Trafficking are minors. Here are some of the signs to look out for. Lack of knowledge about where they are, controlled communication, CB chatter about commercial company, or flashing lights signaling a buyer location, a vehicle dropping someone off and picking them up a short time later. Their actions can truly make a difference in the life of someone else. Lives like Nikki's and countless others.
first met Angeline Morales at a local shelter. She arrived in the United States just a few days ago. Morales first left Venezuela to Colombia in search of better opportunities. She tells me that she came here to the United States through the insistence of her sons. She and her husband decided to make the journey in search of a better life. All five arrived in the United States together, but during in-processing, they were separated. She was able to reunite with her husband and two of her sons, but is still waiting to find her her third son, telling me that she has not heard anything from him since arriving. Never been separated from my sons. Everything I have ever worked for is for my kids. To not be separated from them, I have been mom and dad for my kids. I have always been with my kids. I have never left their sight.